Okay. Yeah. Okay, so good evening, everyone. Um, before we begin, we'd like to welcome you all to our third town hall meeting. Please allow me to provide a brief introduction about our group, the Task Force Regularization. Session. So the Task Force Regularization Session, or the TFR, was initiated in 2017 by the GFPC, or the Geneva Forum for Philippine Concerns. It was together with activists and concerned Filipinos. It was um, initiated to arouse organ and organize and mobilize the migrant domestic workers in the Filipino community in Geneva to vigorously support the Operation Papyrus, which successfully led to the regularization of thousands of undocumented migrants. TFR is an independent organization, and during the Operation Papyrus, it has organized Filipino community meetings with different Filipino groups to inform them about the project and its requirements. After a successful turnout and result, TFR now continues to collaborate with small groups like the GFPC and CSSP in continuing the struggle for the regularization of the undocumented migrant domestic workers. At this present time, TFR has organized a series of online town hall meetings such as this one on the rights of the domestic workers in the time of the COVID-19 pandemic. This series of town hall meetings would help educate the domestic workers on their rights and the various social assistances given by the local government, the NGOs and other social movements and the Geneva Cantonal Authorities. TFR is also actively supporting the Caravan de Solidarity in their food distribution drive. TFR volunteers have been helping the weekly drive with the packing, distribution and crowd control. TFR has also helped in the solicitation of food vouchers that we have turn over to the caravan. We also are currently continuing to inform the Filipino <laughs> community of various COVID-19 social assistances that are available to them. A more detailed information regarding our group can be found on our FB page, Task Force Regularization. We invite you to please visit, like, and share that page. And also TFR switchable via email at taskforceregularization at gmail.com or by phone at 077-969-6133 from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. from Tuesdays to Saturdays. So that's it. Um, thank you for your attention. I will now turn over the microphone to Raymond Flores who will explain the meeting protocols. Thank you. Your mic is on mute, Raymond. Good evening, everyone. So thank you, Val. Um, the ground rule one of the ground rules is um, when you have questions, so you can just put your questions to the to the to the chat box, or send us an email um, at tfr uh, no sorry uh, taskforce regularization at gmail.com or for any other inquiries, and also uh, you can also raise your hands if you want to to ask questions. So our questions will be um, by topic. So we have, I think, three to, or four topics tonight. Uh, so after one topic, we go for question and answers, at least four questions, and then we go to the following topic. All right. So have a nice evening, everyone, and enjoy the session. And tonight, we have a new host. Let me introduce you. Our host, the main host tonight, is Toss, Mr. Toss. Um, Mr. Toss is the Education Secretary, Building and Wood Workers International. And please welcome Toss. Okay, thank you, Raymond. Uh, I will chair uh, this meeting though I will be assisted by Valerie with regard to the question and answer because we will have questions from, uh, from the floor or from the video itself, from the chat box, and also maybe from the emails. So in any case, uh, again, I'm uh, Tos Anyunwebo. I'm the Education Secretary of a Global Trade Union for Construction Workers. Uh, this is the third of a series of activities that uh, the Task Force regular Regularization has been uh, undertaking and today we have our consistent uh, speaker who has been present in all our previous two events. Uh, Alessandro uh, de Filippo is uh, coming from the collective of support for undocumented migrants in Geneva 
And just to give you a brief uh, introduction of the, the organization he is representing, uh, it is an association of around 30 organizations that are active in the defense of migrant workers uh, without legal status. The objectives of their organization are to fight for the collective regularization and recognition of the rights of immigrants, as well as their families. Uh, second is to defend the rights of immigrants with status in the face of discrimination. Number three is to promote and stimulate and coordinate all activities aimed at defending and recognizing the rights of these people. And lastly, to support non-status immigrants who want to emerge from the shadows in their fight for legal and collective recognition. So they are operating on so-called three pillars. The first one is uh, information for people without legal status. Second is the raising of public and media awareness. And of course, uh, political lobbying. So the last session uh, we have seen uh, was conducted uh, last April 20. So it has been a few weeks since then, and the general condition has somehow changed in Geneva with regard to the so-called shutdown or lockdown. And last May 11, the phase one of the reopening of the community was uh, uh, start actually started. And uh, of course, since April 20, Maybe there are new developments, new policies, and this is why the group uh, organized this update session uh, for all our uh, compatriots, as well as other colleagues who are interested in the issue. So last time, of course, when we talk about the domestic uh, economy workers, it is a very multidimensional issue. Last time we talked about salaries and wages, of course, the loss of it for many people. It is also related to the issue of permit on how you can stay here in this country. It's an issue related to healthcare and even occupational health and safety. It is about the issue of food, the lack of uh, income to pay rentals, the lack of rights, especially when your employer just suddenly say, you're out uh, and we don't want you to come back anymore. It's an issue of union representation and how we can fight for these rights. It's also an issue with AVS, with Shomaj. And finally, of course, for some people, it's an issue on the uh, papyrus, the implications, especially on the basic point that uh, the papyrus is related to the point that you should have financial independence. So these are all sorts of issues that we have covered last time. And I think uh, with this new presentation from uh, uh, Alessandro, we would be happy to hear some updates or maybe there are new angles or there are good news that has evolved from the previous discussions. So without much this, uh, further presentation, I would like to call Alessandro to take the floor and start his presentation. And then later on, we will have a, a question and answer portion. So Alessandro, thank you very much for joining us. The microphone is now yours. Thanks to you. Thanks for the presentation and the invitation. Is okay with the sound? Okay. So uh, I, I would like to talk about three different topics. My proposition is at the end of every one of these three topics, uh, we have a little discussion with question and answer. The first one will be about where and how to find financial support. The second one will be about all the questions that are around the logement, the apartments, the place where people live. And the third top topic will be about work and social insurance. So starting since the beginning, we know that a lot of people lose part or all of their jobs because due to this uh, pandemic. And uh, in a lot of cases, the employer didn't uh, respect the law and they didn't pay the three months they had to pay. 
and in other, but I will develop this thema on the third topics. I know that the, for a lot of people, the first emergency is how to find support to pay the rent, how to find financial support to pay the food. So there are two different big ways. One for people that were regularized, that are with permits, could be true papyrus, could be before, no matter, with permit, and or uh, that are in process, people for whom we had already present an application. This is the first uh, case. The second one is for sans papier, people who don't have any permit and who never did any request of permit. So in the first case, for people who have permit or for people who are in process to ask for a permit, they can help, they can ask the help, the financial support from Hospice General. I know that when people heard that, they are afraid because for years and years, we always talk to the people, we always explain that asking financial support from Hospice General, which is the official social help from the state, could be a problem to have a permit. Or in the, or in the process of papyrus or before. Or could be a problem to renew the permit. It is true, but the, it was an, we have an official declaration Geneva government, according with the same Secretariat d'État aux Migrations, with the federal authority, that says exactly that for all the people with permit or in process that will ask financial support of Hospice General during the COVID crisis, they will be, it will be no problem for renewal of permit or for obtaining a permit. All the financial support from Hospice General during this period will not be a problem. This is an official decision. I will send you, I think we will, we will have this document since tomorrow. It will be traduced uh, with traduction in different language with the official stamp of the government that explained that. So this is very important because I know that people are afraid to ask this help. They're scared about the permit, but they can do that. And for all the people that could do that and could receive this support, it makes more resource for other people. So this, is, this was the first step. The second case for people who don't have any permit and who are not in process. How and where to find financial support? There is three big, in Geneva, there is three big organization that can give this support. Alors, first, I will talk about CCSI, Centre de Contact Suisse Immigré. This is only for who have already a dossier, an open file there. It means Centre de Contact Suisse Immigré works with family who have children since the, the birth, till 12 years old. They work with the family to make the inscription for children, for medical health, and to find subside. It's a public participation of the state to, to pay uh, the um, medical health. So for all the people, for, the, it's for family who have already uh, one file open for, with CCSI, Centre de Contact Suisse Immigré, they can phone, they can call directly there. Only these people. For all the other people, there is these two big organization, member of the collective, Centre Social Protestant and Caritas. This last time, this organization received quite, quite a lot of money uh, on, between all in the Chaine du Bonheur, but from other foundation too. And there is the possibility to help the people to pay the rent. Now, 
I know that it's difficult to have contact with them because so many, so many, so many people are trying to call them. But you have to insist to call again and again. There is no other solution and no other way to have contact. With all these three organizations, there is not an absolutely guarantee that you will have this help. You have to ask and to explain your situation. Then they will check and they will try to help you till they have money to do that. Maybe there are other foundations that could help too. Maybe you know some of this. So I give the information for what I know, but if someone here now uh, in this meeting have complementary information of, of where to find financial help, they can, they can um, share with us. That's all for the, for the first, uh, for the first uh, issue. So I leave place to questions. Place and time. Okay, thank you. Uh, Valerie, we'll uh, share the uh, question and answer. So please. Yes, um, we're waiting for, for questions to come in, but um, I do have one question, Alessandra, if you would mind um, clarifying this. You said that there's no problem for the renewal of permits during the COVID-19 period if they ask out from the Hospice General. But yeah. until when is it considered a COVID-19 period, especially now that the confinement is being lifted? So um, people are just know, are knowing this just now. So if they apply now for help, until when would it be considered as a COVID-19 period help Very for good. them? Very good question. We don't know. What is sure is that it starts uh, on 15th of March, but it's not related with the decision of confinement or state of emergency. Okay. The period, the, 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 because there is two, two levels. There is one uh, level of public health with, with the problem of, of the COVID virus, but there is one other level, which is an economic and, and social level. Okay. We will have a decision. This will be decided by the authority. So I don't know where it will be, when it will be, sorry. But what is sure is that it will take several months. And at the time they will decide that it stop, we will transmit. So if, for example, I don't know, let's do an example. If it will stop at the end of August, it will be an, there will be an official decision of the authority that this special period stop there. And we will have this information and transmit to everybody. And it means all the people who will receive the L during this period uh, will not have any problem. Okay, so there's no risk for them to start going to Hospice General now until the time that no, it is going no to be risk. communicated absolutely, that it's absolutely. finished. Okay, and I want, so I it's want clear. To, okay, and I want to add something because this, it was the first step, the question of the hospice. Uh, this question, this results, it's because all our association, Collective Sans Papier, but uh, even the, the CAMSCO, the, the group of research of, of Parchemin, Sans Social Protestant, a lot of us write to the, to the government to explain the situation and to, to have different questions and, uh, and uh, revendications. And, uh, one of these was that, that the possibility for people to have the support of uh, Hospice General with any bad consequence. The next step we want to ask to the government is for the problem of the debt. We know that for a lot of people who just received the permit and have lose job or part of job, they have a problem to pay medical health, which is quite expensive and obligatory. So we will ask the government on the same way we obtained this solution, provisory solution with Hospice General, we will ask them for the question of debt. How to find a solution to help people to pay medical health and maybe to pay debt of medical health. Till, but we just start with that. Okay. So now we just have the result with Hospice General, okay? 
So now, for now, it's just re requesting for financial aid from Hospice General that is not going to have any effect on their permit renewal or the processing of their permit. Voilà, exactly. Okay. Now, now the problem is how it's, it, there is another, now the concrete problem is how to reach Hospice General, where to find is, and we are talking with them. We, we ask that they give us a clear indication. If it's a central number, if it's number of AMIG, number of ATSP, or if people must uh, must call the, the CAS, which is in, in, in every area, there is a Centre d'Action Sociale et de Santé, we still don't know, it's not very clear. This is the problem of the, uh, of the internal organization of Hospice General, which is a so big administration. So we know it will not be easy, but please, if there are people that try to have help an Hospice General and cannot reach Hospice, come back to us. Okay. Okay, that's not that. Um, I have not seen any other questions from the chat box. Um, Raymond, is there other people raising their hands to ask questions? Raymond, are you there? Do no, you, have... you can. Charlie is raising uh, his hand. Charlie is raising his hand. Okay, Charlie. No other? Ch Charlie, um, can you unmute Charlie, please? Yeah, just a second, Charlie. Okay, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm answering to Alessandro's point uh, if we know other foundations to get uh, to have money and support. Mm -hmm. uh, from the caravan, we know because uh, I'm look, uh, we just went, we opened our official bank account. There's a uh, fiduciary now. So that's very uh, uh, transparent also for me. So uh, now I can see who's been giving money. And th there are a lot of foundations who normally give money for sports events, which are not happening now. Uh, you can tap on those. It's not a very likely venue for activists to to ask uh, funds for, but apparently uh, there are a lot, and they don't know what to do with their money. So uh, that that would be something I think which is worth uh, pursuing. Okay. Okay. Do you have anyone else? Yes, I would like to share something. Okay, just a second. Um, let me just uh, do something. Yes, um, this is the Bureau Central Dead. They can, uh, you can also try to ask for uh, help, especially when you have a child. Um, this Bureau Central Dead Social can only help you temporarily uh, which means that uh, if you if you have a job if if your employer promised you to uh, to uh, to to give you a job after covid then uh, you, you they can they can give you uh, this help they can they can, they could probably pay your rent and their health insurance as well so we have already a case uh, that we give to Bureau Centre Dead Social, and now it's in process for approval. So I was contacted yesterday by the uh, social assistant for a family. Okay, so Bureau Central Dead Social. So in in uh, from the internet, you can you can go for, uh, from your browser. You can type BCAS dot ch b c a s bravo charlie alpha sierra dot ch and you can get all the information from from that website thank you okay i would also like to add that there is also one more um association or foundation that also helps um especially particularly single parents out there um they also provide financial help for rentals and also for like free diapers for children. They're called Ed Suisse pour la mère et enfant. Um, you can contact them by email or from their webpage. The webpage is, is, is asme.ch and they speak French, English, Italian, and German. 
So that aid, um, I was able to benefit from that when I gave birth to my son. And they really help uh, mothers and single parents out there who are having difficulties for their children. Is there anyone else who'd like to ask a question or share something in particular to this topic? Um, um, I think Angel, Angela is wait, raising her hand. Can you unmute, please, Raymond? Yes, Angela. Angela's iPad, that's what it's called on the... Uh, let me just... Uh... Okay. I... All right. Okay, thank you. Hi. Um, I have a question regarding the funding. You know, the suffering of um, such people are not is not limited to just those in Switzerland. Should we get funding, may we use this funding to other EU countries or is it just limited for those located in Switzerland? Can we help others who are suffering in the same way? No rental, no insurance, no job, you know. Could we reach out to other other groups of people located, let's say, in Germany, France, or no? That's unfortunately. Austria. Unfortunately, for my own opinion, Miss um, Angela, it's mm -hmm. only reserved for the Geneva Canton. Oh, okay. I don't, even, I don't think so that the Geneva Canton. I mean, you know, will also help the other cantons of Switzerland. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good to know. Thank you. In, in, can I add? Yeah, sure. Alessandro can clarify further. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> in all this kind of help are for people who are living here in this canton. In every canton, the, the, it's a federal system in Switzerland, as you know. So in, in every canton, uh, there are different organizations that receive help from private foundation or from Chaine du Bonheur that can help people who live in this canton. It's very important I tell you that because uh, we had some problem, not with your community, but with other community. They move around Switzerland to try to find help. And now it's a problem in another canton for this community. So for who, all this, all the money that we uh, that mm -hmm. we received from um, maybe could be from the state, could be from private foundation, and now Caritas and social, social protestant, some other are giving to the people is for people who are living here, not in another canton. Okay, in another canton, in Zurich, in Basel, in Bern, in Lausanne, it's possible to have this help too. But we have this system, and it's better for economical reason, but for healthy reason too. That try not people start to move all around Switzerland because it's a question of solidarity between people too. If all the people move and go in different place to ask help, then it will be not enough for everybody, and the criteria will be more uh, strong, and it will mm -hmm. not be good. So. The help that we receive are for people that are living here. Then about international help, international solidarity, it's something help. There are other programs and other kinds of found when we can do requests to help uh, people outside. This is another thing. But all these concrete yes. financial help that, that I was talking about are for people here. Okay? Thank you. I think Charlie was raising his hand a while ago. Charlie, do you want to say something? Yes, okay, my mic's on. Um, yeah. Just wanted to, to repeat uh, because uh, I'm, I'm always um, worried about people looking at our other several videos. What Alessandra said today, I think, if I've understood it properly, has not changed from the last time. The, the situation, uh, the legal situation is still the same. Is that correct, Alessandra? Pertaining to your uh, one, two, three points you, you raised. Just access away. for, for uh, to help for uh, the Hospice General. Yes. The, for the people that don't have permit, the situation remains the same. Mm -hmm. the, the change is for people who have permit. 
Okay. Okay. And this is very important because if uh, sometimes if people go directly to a speech general, for example, and they say, I need help because my situation is difficult and they don't have permit, some assistant of a speech, social assistant of a speech general will tell them, okay, we can help you, but only if you make a request of permit. What we have to explain to, uh, to people is be careful. Don't, don't put an application by yourself before having checked your situation with some of our organization. Because it's true that if you do, even just now, for example, you are in an emergency situation and you, you, you put a request of permit in demande de permis at Office Cantonal de la Population, then they can open the case uh, at the Hospice General and you receive the help. But you have to think, people have to think what, what, what will go on later and not put themselves in danger. Okay? Alessandro, I think um, Kelly from the Swiss Nanny Association would like to share something. Okay. Um, Kelly, where's Kelly? Okay, I'm going to unmute her. Kelly, you are unmuted. Okay, I can hear everybody. Um, so the Swiss Nanny Association also had a grant from the Chaine de Bonheur to um, provide protection gear to domestic workers in Geneva. Um, we only knew this one week, but we worked very hard. Um, so the Swiss Nanny Association will give 250 cleaners or nannies a package with masks and gel, plus information about the rights uh, for the domestic workers. Um, we don't know for sure the venue, but we will start giving this away on Sunday. And um, I can send the information as well to Alessandro and, and the task force. Um, because to have to qualify for this package, um, you need to fill in a few questions that we will ask. And, and Kelly, you have mentioned yes. as well um, through, a, through a chat box the, about uh, the uh, financial aid from the uh, from the Red Cross. Yes. So the Red Cross um, also has a lot of money from the Chien de Bonheur. And they are uh, starting um, giving 1,000 Swiss francs to help with rent and uh, first uh, needs like food. Um, I don't know all the conditions, so I also don't know yet if it works for people without papers, but I think so. So they announced that yesterday on their Facebook. I think uh, the task force uh, is better to uh, to uh, to contact Red Cross for more information and we can share to our Kababayan here in Geneva. Thanks, Kelly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Um, Epi is also raising her hand. Can we unmute Epi, please? Raymond. Okay. Good evening. Uh, actually, we are from uh, uh, European Network of Filipino Diaspora. I also with us our chair from Europe, Ms. Um, Leonor Winterfall from Norway. That's why we are also, we want to hear everything. We want to learn. This is also one of our program because we have, actually, we have also a lot of uh, situation a lot of uh, and we uh, we have also a lot of concerns about uh, P, uh, Filipino who don't have papers illegals especially in other countries not only in Switzerland no Italy uh, and other parts um, so we are here um, Epi sorry to interrupt you Epi uh, I'm sorry the topic for tonight is all about Geneva and yes. uh, maybe perhaps uh, you can say something more after the all the topics you know okay. at the end. Yeah, thank you, Raymond. Also, I because I'm also dealing with insurance, I have also a lot of clients in Geneva that 
But, I'm, I'm sorry, Epi. I'm sorry, Epi. We have a specific topic. Okay? We have a specific topic. So please, uh, at the end, you can share something about... Okay, okay, okay. Then I will do addition. I will do yeah. that. I will share afterwards na lang. All right. Thanks. Yeah, we'll give we'll give you some floor to 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 provide some presentation kung whatever it is that you want to share with us with the group. Okay, okay, okay. So we can move on to the next topic if that's okay with you. Okay, no, Okay, no, is there anyone else okay. who wants to add on the topic or can we move on to the second topic that Alessandro would like to discuss with us? Um, Tas, I'll give you the floor. Yeah, I don't see anyone raising their hand. So, Alessandro, you can continue okay. with item on the apartments. Okay, second topic is about accommodation. Uh, we, we, we are talking with ASLOCA, ASLOCA, which is the association in Geneva. It's a national association, and they have a cantonal section in Geneva that help, peop helps, help people who... Uh, rent or sub-rent their accommodation. And uh, we, we are planning a system to help, help people that risk are in risk of expulsion of their place, of their accommodation, because they cannot pay anymore their rent. We have to know by law that even if there is no written contract, that the owner or the, the, the main letter of the accommodation don't have the right to put someone outside in the street in one day. He must write a letter and give three months time. So we have a document that is ready. Uh, if for example, someone have this risk uh, we have these documents. We write this, this official letter for him, explain and explaining that uh, the owner don't have the right to do this expulsion. By experience, when they receive that, they stop with that because it's always the same old sad story. When people are undocumented, sans papier, uh, the 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 owner they think they can do what they want. But it's not that. So if uh, people are in this kind of danger, they must take contact with us. We need the name of the people, the direction, and the name of the owner or of the main leger uh, principal. I don't know the, the exact word in English. I'm sorry, which one? The leger, the, the, uh, the landlord. Okay, okay. So that that is when people know before that there is this risk. We can do an intervention even um, after the expulsion in the first 48 hours. If someone was uh, sent away of his place, he can contact us in 48 first hours and we can make an intervention and we can oblige the landlord to open the, the apartments again. Okay, this is one of the information. The other part of this information regarding the accommodation, it's about what we call in French, marchand de sommeil. It means people who make a lot of profit renting apartments to a lot of people. Maybe you know that in Geneva, there are different legal complaints now uh, running on, on Ministère Public. Uh, we have um, another net and uh, uh, agreement with some uh, jurist progressists who are private lawyers that can make good special price or working for free in different kinds of situation to different people that are victim and uh, the ASLOCA, it's on participation in, in this uh, network, if you want. So there is, the message is there is possibility to have protection. And not only that, but if we have to denounce some owner or landlord that do that, 
we have a direct contact with one section of the police, which is BTPI, Brigade contre la Traite des êtres humains. We have an agreement with them. They want to record the legal complaint and to transmit to Minister Public, but without talking about the legal situation of the people, which is very important. It's like a um, firewall. So this was the two information that I wanted to give about the question of the accommodation. If you have question. Okay, thank you, Alessandro. So that's the portion on the accommodation. And uh, we will focus the questions on this topic again as usual. And then later on, we will move to the, the third topic uh, of Alessandro. So Valerie, do we have something? Um, I do not see any questions coming in right now. Are people um, raising their hands? Is there anyone who would like to address this issue about rent topics, sublease and um, illegal landlords? Um, I think it's quite clear what Alessandra said. So um, yeah, thank us. you very much for that. Uh, yeah, it's quite clear, direct, but uh, we know how to contact. You explained the procedure properly. So in any case, we will send out the additional information that we gather in this particular meeting and then this is live and people can visit again uh, later on so now we can go to the last uh, section the work and okay. social issue i just repeat what is very important in the, all this question of accommodation is to do as quick as possible yeah is to react very 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 quick and you will react in 48 hours for any intervention from your no, side. We, we will allow, no, this question of 48 hours, it's a mm -hmm. legal side. It means we can do something even 48 hours after the expulsion. Ah, 48 hours after. Yeah. Okay. At least 48 after, hours it's before. It's more difficult to do something. Mm -hmm. We can do something in a legal way, but it's more difficult to, to get the, the home back. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, Alessandro, I have one question. I'm sorry before we go forward. I'm sorry, Taz, if it's okay. Yeah. Um, Alessandro, the question is if someone is forced to, to sign a end contract, giving them just one month instead of the three months notice, can that sign um, cancellation of the contract be revoked because of the it's not the three month grace period time? For all this question, now we have a very good relationship with Asloka. There, there are specialists on the droit du bail, which, which is the um, droit du bail. How, how to tell you that? It, it's right the, for for the for the rent. But um, the question is, yeah. you said if they are forced to leave, um, with, that it's not within the grace period. They have the right to fight for the for the apartment, right? But yeah. if they are given only one month instead of ninety days, can they can they appeal to that as well? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, mm. so it should really yeah, be 90 must days. Be, must be three months minimum. And especially now during this period, we have the support of the authority. So I know that a lot of time people are afraid to, 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 to say no, to, to do something because there is always this, um, this pressure of the owner or landlord that say, if you're not happy, I will call the police. But in this okay. case, it's not true because if they call the police, they will go directly in jail. Okay, but the person who will call, uh, who are renting, even if they don't have permit, they won't be bothered by the police or get in trouble with the police. Yeah, because we have this special accord with one of the section, which is BTPI, Brigade de okay. Protatrat des Êtres Humains. And they can All right, thank you. This is already the case which is going on. Maybe you read it in the newspaper. There is a couple who is in prison. It's it's because of this kind of case. Yeah, that's clear. Um, I don't think we only have any other questions. So, um, I think we can proceed. I just want to add something, uh, Alessandro. Um, maybe uh, could you please um, explain about the legal sublease and the illegal sublease? How can we identify a legal sublease and an illegal sublease? In any case, alors, legal sublease, it must be, uh, there must be a contract between the subletter and the letter, and it must be approved by the Régie. Okay? This is a legal sublet. 
an illegal sublet in when there is not uh, a, the sublet was not announced to the regime and there is no mm. contract and in the in the majority of the case uh, they they make a financial um, profit the people who sublet in this case but okay. even in this case we have a legal basis to defend the people okay mm. even if okay. it's an illegal sublet this is the message there is the way to be defended, to defend yourself. Okay, uh, thank you. We can now move to the last item because we are entering our first hour. And of yeah. course, this kind of conferences is also a bit tiring actually. Sometimes it's better to have face-to-face -face conversations. So yeah. Alessandro, we can deal now with the work and social insurance. Okay, I will try to, to, to do more, more quick and it's not the first time that we're talking about this uh, issue about uh, job, about losing job, okay? So it's more like a, not a real update, but just to remember what is the situation. Uh, and in case we can do uh, like we do the last time, we can organize if you need, and if you think it's a good idea, one more time with someone from a Syndica seat and maybe from Syndica Inia, and this time maybe from OSIR too. Anyway, two things. There is a legal obligation from the employer to give these three months of delay when they stop uh, our working relationship. Now, we know that especially in the domestic sector, there, there is different kind of situation. Sometimes the employer, they, they just say, are we sorry? Uh, you cannot work for us anymore, but just during this period and uh, we'll start again when it will be possible. So I, in this case, I can understand that it's more uh, difficult for the employee to do something against the employer because they are afraid to lose the job definitively. So it's upon them. Everybody has to put on the balance, but I can understand that in this, in this kind of situation, it's more difficult. When people were quit definitively, it's absolutely they have to go to syndicat because there is the way to find, to, to, to have uh, the, the, the missing salary back. One other thing is that there is a distance between not doing anything because we're scared or going against the employer through the syndicate. And this uh, middle way, if you want, can be helped by document of Centre Social Protestant or Caritas that uh, I already sense I, are, are at your disposition. It's good, it's like an open letter uh, to the employer that explain the legal basis, what are their obligation, but they explain in a cooperating way. They, they, it's not like um, they don't treat the, the, the employer. They say, you know that there is this law, and please, there is not only this law, but all the side of the human relation in this difficult period. And I have a lot of back news that when this letter was given, we had quite a good um, issue at the end. So the employer, some of the employer, they accept to pay people even if they cannot come to work, which is very important, basically. So this is when the, the job was interrupted temporarily or uh, definitively. The, the new things, it's about APG, Assurance Perte de Gain. This is something new. And it's possible to have this Assurance Perte de Gain, but in very specific situation. First of all, I'm talking about domestic sector, people must have been declared to AVS. If people not have been declared, it's not possible to get that. Second condition, it's for people, for example, who have children at home and couldn't work for this reason. And they must do this request quite quick. In any case, uh, I'm sorry, I just saw that my... <laughs> My uh, battery will will soon ending and don't and don't have the the charge with me. 
So I, I think I have five minutes more, but maybe not more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I just, I just saw like uh, uh, right now. And uh, so, but in any case, to, to, I send to um, Raymond the, the, the explanation of how to get that. And it must be, uh, it must be request to Office Cantonal des Assurances Sociales, to AVS. À la caisse de l'AVS. But it's quite difficult to do that. So you can be helped or by the syndicate or by the OSIRT too. So I just stop here because we don't have a lot of time. I prefer to answer uh, the question, the eventual question. Okay, thanks. So we have less than five minutes with the battery of Alessandro. So Val, uh, Val yes, something? if you have questions that are targeted um, to Alessandro's topic or to him directly, we can speak now. Otherwise, we can discuss other matters without Alessandro once his battery has died. Is there anything yeah. direct think, for Alessandro? I think for the APG, for, for the Assurance Père de Gain, it's better that they call the uh, Czech Service or the yeah. OCAS. Well, for OCAS, it's going to be a, a very hard, uh, it's a hard step because uh, they have to fill up a form, you know, from the website of OCAS. The website of Ocas is ocas.ch. It's just behind the train station. Yeah, only by phone. Yeah, okay. So, Val, if there's nothing, I can close this section and let go of Alessandro, but then we can continue on for some conversation among the Filipinos. That's fine. Yes, I think that's great. Um, I don't see anyone yeah. raising their hands or, or sending any questions. So. Okay, um, let yeah, me good. formally close this portion for Alessandro. Uh, thank you very much again, Alessandro. We have uh, taken your time three times now, but uh, you will see there are hundreds of people also watching the YouTube. Uh, at least the last uh, session, we had 302 already as viewing it. So, and on the other hand, our respective organization and network are sending the additional information that we have. So I think just crucial to close this portion with you, Alessandro, is that what we have to discuss later on are the further steps that we have to move on. If things become normalized, what are the situation? What will be the changes? And then on the other hand, what is for the task force to do in sending out more the information to the network, especially the new updates that you have given us. But okay. in any case, we will discuss and continue and hopefully uh, you're available for the uh, future updates and we'll do our best to bring out the information out there so that we can help our fellow workers uh, in Geneva. So thank you very much, Alessandro. We will release you with your almost 2% battery, I suppose. <laughs> you maybe, can say your last words. <laughs> okay, okay. Maybe just one last information, very, very quick. Um, it, during the, the, the last Caravan de la Solidarité, the distribution uh, last Saturday, a strange rumors came that say that there is a collective regularization on course and people must <laughs> do the inscription on collective sans papier. Uh, it was uh, inside the, the South, American some South, South American community. It's not true, just to be clear. There is nothing new. Uh, the, the law remains the same, and it's very difficult in this time to, to put new application. We are always in contact with the authority. We are always trying to find the best solution for everybody. We will always ask uh, the, the principle of the regularization, but there is not a new program or something like that. Okay? J just okay. to inform the, 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 the people. That's and good last, thing, last thing, it was a uh, communique de presse uh, very bad from the UDC, which is the extreme yeah. right, that say the it's it it appears yesterday. It say that the COVID is due to the undocumented migrants. So we just mm -hmm. answer to that, and uh, we make a new communique de, de, de presse. And what we ask for the, the authority is the possibility to have a free test for COVID, because now people must pay 300 francs. We ask to have emergency place for people who are sick from COVID and they, they cannot be uh, alone in the place where they live. 
just you to know. But I will send uh, to, 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 to Raymond and, jo and, and Joseph, I will send the, the, our communique de press. So just you know, and just be informed. Okay. May I answer so, quickly? Uh, so you soon, see you soon. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, yes, exactly that. Uh, uh, we got that too. So communicate press against them because they're okay. also attacking. Uh, the argument is you see so many needy people because it's the left-leaning cities which favored illegal entries. Yeah. And illegal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we have we have to stress out. That's one thing. Second, I, I had a chance to talk to Mode yesterday. Uh, I don't know if how useful he, he can still be. I think he could be. Uh, and he pledged uh, if we have concrete propositions that he might try to help. Okay. Uh, uh, think mm -hmm. of something. Okay, Alessandra. Okay. And, uh, Very good. And then let's, okay. let's try to do something. Okay. See you soon. Okay, thank you. thank you, Alessandro, and we will continue with some further discussions among ourselves. Okay. Thank you very okay. much.